uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, this is our annual event and also a special reunion occasion for Radio S from 19 impacts, uh, current and future students of the master program in applied linguistics, jointly conducted by Curtin University in Australia and Simio Regional Training Center in Vietnam. Before we go with the webinar program, first of all, uh, it's in my honor to introduce to you our participants. First of all, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Julian Chen, our presenter today uh, from Curtin University, Australia. Alumni of 19 in text uh, of the Master Program in Applied Linguistics, current students of uh, Intech 20, applicants for Intech 21 and who are interested in the master program, school teachers of English from different provinces of Vietnam, and finally staff and teachers of Simuri track. The program of our webinar will include the following items. Uh, the webinar will be started with the presentation by Associate Professor Dr. Julian Chen, followed by a Q&A session. Then comes the information session on uh, the master program in applied linguistics for those participants who are interested in applying for this program this year. And I highly appreciate it if some alumni can manage some time to stay with us to share their experience in uh, studying the master programs with the future students. In the webinar today, we are presenting the topic of the basic uh, of uh, online language teaching in the pandemic world, resilient pedagogy, research, and future direction, presented by Dr. Julian Chen. Julian is an uh, associate um, professor of applied language and the co uh, coordinator of the Asian Languages course um, at Curtin University, Australia. Julian has conducted studies related to technology mediated task based language teaching, 3D virtual environments, teachers' identity, and learners' engagement. He has led multiple range projects to build interdisciplinary uh, synergy across applied linguistics, educational technology, and STEM. His work has appeared in high impact and flagship journals. He is currently the book review editor of Australian Review of Applied Linguistics. His newly edited book has been published recently, and I believe he will share with you about it today. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box in your Zoom panel control. And now, without uh, further ado, I will turn the time over to our presenter today, Dr. Julian Chen. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Chen, for having me, and thank you so much for your kind introduction. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's, a, it's such a privilege and honor to um, see some familiar faces and also some new faces here today. Um, you know, uh, when I was, you know, in the beginning, I was like, wow, that was two years ago when I was in Ho Chi Minh City. I went to go back again and um, to meet with you guys. Um, so, yeah. So today's topic is about how we can actually use uh, a lot of strategies and also pedagogy during the pandemic time. So you'll be that we can draw today. Um, so I'm gonna share with you some kind of uh, um, digital apps and also resources that you can actually tap into for your teaching and learning as well. So um, I, I'm conscious of, of the fact that my voice might be breaking out a little bit, Due to the internet connection. So if my voice is not clear, um, please let me know to test in the chat. Um, so I will speak again because the internet connection. Meeting today. Um, so Chen, could you um, allow me to don't mind? Thank you. 
So I'm going to show my screen. Um, so let me know if you can see it. Can you see? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. Just put the bar down here a little bit. Okay. So doing my presentation. Thank you, guys. I'm going to use the you know full presentation mode, so I may not be able to go back to the chat. So um, if I somehow your questions, just let me know, I'll just shut out again. So that's hit it. Okay. So before we start, I'm just going to for today's presentation, my talk. Um, I know Chan has already talked a review about me, but I would like to talk about me myself. Uh, just get you a little bit better understanding about who I am and where I'm coming from and you know where we are heading. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's the difference between online teaching and teaching online, the so-called emergency remote teaching. And also I'm going to unpack you know, some kind of um, emergency remote teaching that's called ERT uh, for the short and the impact on language teaching and learning. And I'm going to present a case study, pretty much the, uh, our Asian language program here at Curtin. Um, what's, what's during how they changed their teaching approaches and the delivery mode and what kind of technology they actually put into to actually uh, tackle this uh, crisis. And then I'm going to share with you that this kind of project, uh, the goals, how do, how do we actually implement the project? Some highlights, examples I'm going to share with you as well. And then at the end, I'm going to do some kind of, uh, um, you know, exchange, information exchange. So you have the opportunity to share some hands-on useful language teaching or learning sources or apps that you want to you know exchange with your colleagues today so about the agenda today so it's a, it's a very jam-packed i know because we've got so much to cover but let's take it one step at a time and that uh, you by the end of today's you will have a lot to take away okay so let's continue so I am a applied linguist and also a teaser by training. So my background is in applied linguistics and also in TESOL. Um, and my research pretty much uh, specialized in um, computer assist language learning. So using language, sorry, using technology to um, enhance language teaching and learning. And I have done my uh, dissertation research in Second Life, which is like a 3D, three-dimensional virtual world using task-based language teaching to, um, to enhance students' learning, immersive learning, simulated kind of learning experiences. And because the COVID um, was, you know, appointed as um, called our Asian language course, uh, I will talk me about And then I'm currently a book review editor of Australian Linguistics. I'm also um, an editor of a new book that just been published by Springer um, at the end of uh, today's talk. And then I'm currently on my research, you know, home base, second line. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on, uh, very exciting and a lot of projects I can share with you guys. Some insight that you can take away. Now, before I start my talk today, I want to know how much you know about the difference or you don't think there's a difference between online teaching and teaching online. So um, if you could, okay, okay. Give, sorry, okay. uh, somebody's talking. Um, use a QR code, code to scan this one. And if you can, I 
it is through here. I can tap it. Yes, okay. Can you can you see the link if you want? So if you click on this link, yeah, thank you. If you click on this link, or if you scan a QR code, this one here, if you scan a QR code, it will it should take you to here. And I, I can see somebody else over there. So uh, let's spend a, a, a few minutes just typing. Um, you can add any comment here. So what do you know about online teaching? What do you, what, what's the nature of online teaching? Versus what's the nature of emergency remote teaching ERT? Okay, so let's start to brainstorm or share your thoughts. You should be able to type in there. Are you typing? Yeah, okay, I can see somebody's. You can choose either one of them or both of them. You know, it's just a few, a few points. You don't have to. Like teaching. Okay. All right. So somebody is saying that uh, it's teaching taking place on the internet for online teaching or virtual exchange methodology, whether somebody talk about ERT is emergency make me classes were prepared for in-class learning, but suddenly teachers need to switch online. Hmm, okay, that's pretty good. Back to online teaching again, somebody is saying there is no more language instruction delivered through the internet with the technology tools, okay. Oh, somebody typing web based teaching. <laughs> Fine. So more for ERT. I think ERT is still lacking. A little bit more comments. The first one is pretty good. I like that. Okay. We can have a, a few more and then we'll get back to our point, uh, PowerPoint slides. Okay, so. Okay, so for online teaching, somebody's saying that's referred to long term online teaching. Okay, that's a keyword, a long term online teaching, not as a temporary mode. That See, uh, somebody's saying that classes of disaster or crisis, like, like 2021, change from offline to online or both. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered, you know, the, the and the essence of online teaching and the ERT. So, but we need these two modes and the difference between these two. Are they the same? If they are different, how different? To what extent can they share some common ground or they don't share any common ground? Okay, so this is pretty important because, you know, if you only have an ERT kind of when you try to deliver your online teaching, you might not actually, you know, embrace a fully online teaching kind of uh, principles. Unpack about uh, online teaching at ERT. Uh, somebody saying that online teaching is a form of a teaching using digital learning pl platform. Uh, teaching online requires different types of evidence. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Now. Let's go back to our PowerPoint slides. Again, everyone, if I if I somehow my voice like just breaking breaking me now again, because uh yesterday when I when I test out with the trend, somehow my, my internet was not very stable. Hopefully today is better. Okay, so look at the you know the the essence, the Oh, the synopsis of ERT here. So again, you guys pretty much got it, got it right. So ERT is a, is a rapid shift 
face-to-face -face mode, okay, face-to-face -face mode to online mode overnight because of the crisis, the emergency kind of situation, right? So it's not to recreate the same online teaching course, okay, because it's not the same, because it's overnight, it's, it's very rapid, it's very, very temporary kind of shift. So um, a lot of support that you usually get in online teaching is not available or is not ready for emergency remote teaching for ERT. So it's a quick to set up, okay? And so that's why ERT is totally different from yes, online. Oh, sorry. And then for online learning, So if you look at the some um, different kind of criteria here, so delivery mode, right? So when you try to develop um, online, fully online, you have the online learning in mind, whether it's ER, ERL or ERT is having the face-to-face -face mode in mind. So you don't have online teaching, you know, actually in preparation, you just thought, okay, I'm going to just, copy the face-to-face uh, -face onto the online teaching mode. Same. And in terms of preparation, uh, online learning, online teaching, usually in general, it takes time to be fully robust online course, whether it's ERT is overnight, it's rapid shift, right? You probably only have a one week or two weeks to prepare. I don't know about in Vietnam at that time. Can you remember at that time how, how fast you were forced, you were pushed to do everything online? Probably one week or two weeks, roughly. And for online learning, you have a wide variety of uh, technology tools. You can pilot, you can test out before you decide which one that you think would be more ideal, whether it's ERT or ERL, you got limited technology because you didn't have online learning to begin with, right? And you didn't have a training, you didn't have a fully, you know, full support from your tech support team. And in regular, normal online teaching or learning, usually you have, uh, you know, the tech support team who can actually teach you or train you to mentor you to get yourself ready for using different kind of technology tools for your for your course. So any for online learning or teaching, usually you have the, the principles, right? Teaching principles, online teaching whereas ERT usually don't because you're in a rush because your mindset is still with face-to-face -face kind of teaching model, right? And Finally, there are several kind of, uh, um, I mean, factors you have to consider when you design the online teaching kind of a course or learning kind of a uh, model. So you have to think about is it blended learning or is it is, uh, like a big class size or small class size? And what's your role? Do you meet with the students regularly? Oh, it's totally just offline. So students actually access the materials by themselves and you don't have any interaction or you have very few interactions with your students into consideration when you design any online or teaching learning course. So finally, can you imagine usually it takes six to nine months, six to nine months, like once full semester, to develop a fully online course. And, you, and so it's impossible for, for um, teacher to suddenly become an expert in the online teaching course overnight. You need a lot of preparation, support, and also some, not every, every teacher is actually comfortable with the technology. So it's quite stressful. Um, I want to know if you go back to two years ago when COVID just started, 2020, I want to know what happened at that time. Can you think about 
the impact of the pandemic on your language teaching and students learning. So think about what kind of factors that you could share and you could actually remember at that time. Even now, what kind of impact do you think pandemic still has on you? So again, you can scan QR code or I could type in here for you. So you can click on that and we'll go back to this. And just, you know, input your, your thoughts. Two years ago, let's flag, go flashback. Like, you know, what, what were you feeling at that time? How did you care about your students? And how did, what kind of strategies did you come up with at that time, two years ago? I know uh, Chen told me that now uh, um, are opening for face-to-face um, -face teaching and learning. Um, but in um, Australia, some, some states still, you know, using the online teaching mode just because we still got some. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite unpredictable. You could just um, place anyone, anyone here, and then you can just start, start to type any thought here, make any comment. And we will take a look at the different kind of uh, thoughts before we move on to, to the next slide. I can see that a lot of people, so I keep admitting, admitting them to, to the room. Yeah, it doesn't have to be long. Um, I just want to know uh, what were you what were you thinking at that time? How were you feeling at that time? And what kind of uh, challenges or difficulties or even opportunities or you know strategies you were using? And have you observed your students' learning? How did they feel about the pandemic crisis teaching during ERT? Yes, so you guys didn't have in, enough uh, facilities, equipment to teach study online effectively. That, that is quite um, normal. Uh, I think that across the board, because uh, in my book, I also noticed that some um, authors, chapter authors, they are teachers as well, educators as well. They also mentioned that especially in um, developing countries, um, sometimes students don't have, or teach even teachers don't have a lot of uh, you know technology or internet connection um so that makes learning or teaching even more difficult there is yes um so what about both of it? did you guys already have spend a lot of time trying to find good online tools to allow students to collaborate, share, pay attention online. Okay, the palette, the canvas. Who? Okay, wow, this, this person is very tech savvy, hey? Using a lot of, uh, um, try to explore different kind of technological tools, which you can also see in my edited book, because a lot of teachers use this time, this is period, crisis period, to upscale and try to learn more and see how they can actually enhance the students' learning or we feel they couldn't meet face to face. That, that's quite commendable. I need to take one month to prepare to move to class. One month. I wonder if your school had any support or technical support or training for you guys, for teachers. Uh, it's been a challenge for most of the interaction transaction in the community uh, regarding to uh, interactive learning and teaching environment, language teachers have been required plenty of adaptation. Yes, uh, changing mindset and behavior. It has been also um, an opportunity for pushing ourselves out of the traditional classroom. That's absolutely correct. 
years ago when we started teaching online um, to all of us, right? And the first session, I wasn't even able to start teaching. Wow. So doing the teaching and learning app. That's very interesting. Okay. That reminds me, do you know what you got to do, right? You had to do what you got to do. So as a teacher, right? You still have the show has to go. So whatever technology tools or app you need to actually help facilitate learning or teaching, you will do it. So that's quite interesting. But gradually, we learn to use some apps, and then we got to have a more smooth session. Absolutely. I mean, it's all the steep learning all of us, even for students as well. But you, you use this opportunity to turn it around, to turn this around, and then become your skill set, right? Um, quite demanding. But I, I think it's very popular in the field of uh, you know applied linguistics and also education so i think that you are on the right and without the COVID, about doing a flip classroom or anything to do the online teaching you probably just go to a classroom you know deliver your lesson lecture and go back do the same thing right the same old thing but it changed, it transformed the way we teach and the way we learn. Okay. Yeah, it's a hectic time, definitely. So somebody used to do Microsoft Teams to teach and Google Classroom as well. Um, it's for the barrier. Do you think using more technology is better? that that's a that's a question right so does that mean that you you, you try to use different kind of technology in your in your classroom uh that will show how tech savvy you are but does that mean that it's better challenging and promising to me the pandemic was challenging learn online at home without real interaction my students and i had to learn how to employ online tools when we are back to our offline mode we still take advantage of technology and that is the spirit. Go on you. Go on you. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing with me uh, on what's, what's going on during that period and how you rose to the occasion. What kind, of, what kind of strategy you actually were utilizing to help you and your students to, to continue the educate, language education. Keep my head off to you guys. So now I'm going to move on to the next slide. We will have a lot more uh, interaction today. So this is one of them. So as, as you guys um, mentioned, the stress, roller coaster ride, long, like, steep learning curve, and social distancing makes us more isolated. And then the, the, the distance, virtual isolation, lack of a moral support, and technology, um, lacking technology know-how, and low self-esteem for technology use and online teaching. And also, people haven't actually mentioned this one yet, the last point, lack of a professional development. Have you done any professional development during that time, or you just learn everything by yourself? That, that, that's, the, that's the point, okay? So, um, if you think about this way, what we're doing today is another form of a professional development. Uh, in my book, a lot of teachers everywhere around the world, it's a time to upskill, to learn through professional development. Because not all of us are actually born tech savvy. We all have to learn, right? And this is the best time for us to take to the next level. Um, so let me give you a summary here. So online delivery considerations, interaction, what kind, what kind of, what type of interaction you want for your class and for your students. Can you still do students to student? My course. And then, and if you want to do that, what kind of can you actually 
utilize or you know tap into and what kind of meaningful engagement can you build in and what about it, it's not just about learning you also have to think about students in social emotion right there's social emotional learning and a language process as well and then it's not just copy whatever you're doing in a to the online like you know platform and then you know you, you you actually can just sit tight and then just relax what are they doing in a face-to-face -face classroom to the online mode because sometimes whatever you're doing activities materials you're using for the face-to-face -face class might not work for the online teaching mode so you had to adapt adapt and also turning around okay and some of you mentioned that because some students actually live without computers or internet and they rely heavily on the mobile phone I have seen this a lot in my book, the edited book. A lot of uh, um, chapter authors, like from Philippines, Indonesia, and Vietnam, they also mentioned that um, sometimes the students actually have to share one computer with the whole members, and they pretty much use their cell phone, mobile phone, to to communicate or to do the work. So. It's quite challenging. Uh, some of the activities, materials that could only be done through the PC computer, and that's kind of oh, you, you cannot imagine. So um, now this is part two. I'm going to present you a case that um, I did uh, when. Back in 2020. So I'm going to use um, the two majors, Chinese majors, Chinese uh, and Curtin. So now we call it, we call it together as Asian language. What was going on, what was happening is that um, they offer first unit, they like have several year units, right? The first year units. Uh, it's face to face. They didn't have any online component. They didn't have any online teaching because they didn't need it. it so they, the the lectures, right? The tutors pretty much just did uh, you know hard copies, you know copying a lot of the, like handouts, worksheets for students to actually to. Face to face or hard copy, print based, and paper, paper and pencil kind of marking. Also, did uh, you know a one on one kind of oral examination, and it's pretty grammar filling. And if you look at the, uh, the right hand side here, this is a blackboard. You guys know blackboard, right? It's a online learning management system. So currently used uh, blackboard to manage the online learning material. So this is the, their Blackboard sign, the, 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 one of the units. So what do you think about this structure? What do you think about this Blackboard kind of interface for this unit? I want you guys to tell, you look at the, this Blackboard sign here, this unit on this page, what was, what was your impression? What's your impression of this? Um, blabber structure. So, what would you think about this? You could type in the chat. It's very organized. Oh, you don't mind? So, you got the notes, worksheets, week four, you know. So any uh, comments about this Blackboard page? I think it's a bit confusing to navigate for a newcomer. Okay. Okay, still a little bit uh, confusing. Anything else?
Can we have a one more uh, feedback for? Because it is quite important. Um, there are worksheets to download. Uh, preparing, yes. So you can see, like, we got notes. You had to print out a lot of worksheets to do. And, okay, thing is usually we follow either chronologically or so it's, yeah, it's a very, um, you guys didn't mention this word. I would say this kind of a layout is very linear. Okay, it's very linear. Okay, but sometimes we know students not it's we think they are learning. Like, you know, it's not, they don't just learn like, you know, from A to B or from A to Z. They learn probably like Z, Z. Okay, so this way is like very um, static. It's very linear. And also, do you see any pictures, any features, any videos, any multimodal, different modes of learning materials here? Do we see that here? Or it's pretty much just text? Right, that's another, another um, no, just text, yes, it's phone. Yes, so that's another thing you have to think about. As a teacher, you need to have a critical thinking. Don't just take whatever people give you. You have to think about, hmm, does that work for my students, for my teaching? Or if not, why not, right? Try to design with a critical eye. Just instruction with what to do, yes. And we also, we also know, we also know students actually will actually like to learn something better or more effectively if you can provide different forms of the materials, not just text, right? You can, you can have audio, you can have visual video, you can also have pictures, images, right? A picture is worth a thousand words, right? To enhance their learning. Okay, that's just the thing I want to, uh, to draw you guys' attention to because that's quite important because you will see the contrast later on. All right, let's move on. So, um, so because they never had any online teaching experience, they never had any online teaching or learning component before COVID. So when COVID hit, they got into the panic mode, right? So because they need to confer, they need to translate everything they're doing in classroom to the online Blackboard site. And also, well, because they have a lot of exercises, quizzes, and also oral exams, right? So you think about how they're going to translate and how to you know, transform them back to the online challenge kind of task, right? And also they have to redesign the workshops because they, the workshop used to be face-to-face -face tutorials, but now yeah. it's totally online. So sometimes you want to do some exercise interaction with students in the classroom setting, but now you can't. But actually keep the same interaction online as they usually did in a face-to-face -face learning mode. And that's another question. So they were panicky about it. And also they think about the guidance support and how do they translate or you know, transform the face-to-face -face content? And how do they upscale their technology? And also this, this phenomenon is quite interesting. Uh, student ghosting and virtual isolation. I will explain a bit more about student ghosting later when I show you this. Right. So think about what, what, do we, what do we mean by student ghosting? Have you heard of this term, student ghosting? Maybe that happened to you when you were doing the online teaching with your students as well. And teacher emotion. I wonder if you guys feel very um, you know, stressed and also very anxious when COVID just hit us the first year. Now it is different, right? But at that time when it is beginning of the, the pandemic, everyone's so stressed out and they're so isolated, right? So, 
and I had a school and a director of teaching learning approached me because I was still um, in applied linguistic program, piece of program, uh, because um, my specialty is technology, right? Language teaching and learning using technology. So they approached me uh, asking if I could, if I could, um, you know, mentor or support my colleagues in Asian language course. And I would say, oh yeah, definitely. I would be more than happy because I want to support them. I want to help them out of the, you know, this pandemic. If I could provide more technical support, and because my background is language teaching, I could. So they are not just using technology for technology's sake. They can also think about some underpinning language teaching and learning, suppose, to help them design, choose the most appropriate technology tool. And then also we have this task force, including me and both Japanese Chinese major coordinators and all the tutors, also the IT guys, IT coordinator. The so we have this task force try to revamp the Chinese and, and Japanese major units. So our goal, one of our aims was to streamline the content materials because previously both major, they can't be, I would say, is a lot. They try to jam pack a lot. And also it's very much grammar based. Um, so they have a lot of road drilling, right? So, and how do we um, probably refine, retweak sheet online delivery by making it more engaging, interesting, and also interactive, not just teacher talk, lecturing, not just exercises, but also something more interaction, like, you know, more engaging kind of uh, um, tasks to do related to like, real life tasks and topics. Um, and our ultimate goal was and is still to deliver both natures, University of Australia. That's our target, right? Down the track. So, and I also got a grant, a small grant, but this grant uh, allowed me to conduct an uh, action. So, and, and my, my, um, my, pr my purpose was try to empower them, try to transform their teacher identity from a, a face-to-face only teachers to a capable online teacher as well through the whole virtual community practice. And I also I try to document how they actually uh, change the, their identity and what kind of a challenges they encountered, what kind of strategy they used, and how they actually shift their mentality from face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching. So we follow this kind of planning. We try to plan and we try to implement the and I also try to observe and try to evaluate the results. And we try to reflect on what's working, what's not working, and back again. So it's a kind of like a you know iterative, it's like cycle until we resolve the whole issue. So in terms of the preparation, um, so again, as I mentioned earlier, we review all the content and see are logical and why it's not working, how can we streamline sequencing in a way that is more uh, doable and more feasible. And we also use backward design. I'm going to talk about a bit more about the actual standards later. And then what kind of, uh, you know, oh, by the way, we also use the storyboard. Is my voice breaking up again? Let's see. Okay, no, I'm, I think I'm good so far. Um, we also try to use storyboard to show you just in a minute. And then we try to select different kind of tools to help uh, enhance students' learn online learning experience and make it more engaging and interactive. And then I also try to use different kind of uh, like Zoom, Microsoft Teams to keep contacting them and try to provide 
So give you a little examples here. So again, remember I mentioned earlier, online teaching is not just using technologies per se. You also have to think about what kind of, uh, you know, standards, what kind of framework, what kind of principles you can put on to guide um, online teaching materials and course development, right? So we follow this, uh, this standard called Apple standard called five C's. Uh, so C, right? A, B, C, C. So we have communication, connection, comparison, and community. So you have these five C, so all the course, all the materials, all the units, all the lessons, right? Will be built around these five C's. So when you, when you design any unit, you think about, okay, does this unit of culture or communication or connection? What do I mean by connection? Connection means that you could, you could connect your language skills or knowledge to other subject matters, for example, uh, science, history, art, right? You can use Japanese, you can use Chinese to understand other subject matters, not just language. And how to compare your own language, right? English or Vietnamese and Japanese and Chinese and see the differences, right? And can you reach out to the community members who speak the target language, right? So have this real, real life, authentic interaction with the using whatever you learn from the course. So that's what the five C's is about, okay? So this storyboard, so in the very, very beginning, in the very, very beginning, we try to streamline, that would design the whole unit, whiteboard, to lay out, to lay out every topic through the whole semester. And what kind of a, um, exercises or assessments or tools below each topic and how can we condense or you know, remove something that's not relevant or is redundant? Or can we bring in new assessments or tools to make this topic more engaging? Use this storyboarding as a way to help you know, to develop the new, the new unit. So because of the project, I got some grants, I need to get an ethics approval from our ethics office. So we all, I also asked my colleagues to keep a uh, teaching journal. It was not working. And also I conducted um, the to provide more uh, guidance, right? So after they fit, I, I will show you just in a minute. And also uh, for the, coordinator, right? Chinese major coordinator, Japanese major coordinator. They also had core for their tutors. Remember, the tutors didn't have any online teaching experience either. It's, it was their very, very first time. So they need a lot of uh, guidance, not only from me, but also their major coordinator. So it's a very like, a, you know, stakeholder kind of uh, perspective. And I was at the end wanting to know if this redesign <laughs> Okay, so let's continue. So you can see here, so one of the examples when I did um, in weeks, I would, I would do the debriefing session with them. So I would set up an agenda here, right? I would set up an agenda here. And what I will invite, I will, I will, I will invite them to join me, and then I will ask this or some, you know, interesting, surprising kind of aspects and notice in their um, online teaching session. So we did that every time, but also this is a way for everyone to connect with each other because remember at that time social distancing, isolation, uh, quarantine. We could actually meet every time face to face or even, you know, at school. So this is the only way, it's the only way that brought us all together closer. You're going to do what you're going to do. This is what we got to do, right? And then, you know, to reflect on 
anything they know, they notice, they have observed any challenges, you know, in a, a online session. And if you look at the uh, right hand side on the margin, I provided my guided support. I comment on the areas that I feel like hmm, maybe I could actually provide some more support and some guidance and suggestions, right? So that's how I actually continue my mentoring support for them. And then we also did the uh, you know, Microsoft Teams kind of support. And then because they, we, at Curtin, we used uh, as a management system. So when they had, sure. So what I did was we, um, they did a collaborate session. It's a real time, like real time, like what? using Collaborate through Blackboard. So um, we use that uh, to do the um, online observation because I don't know about in Vietnam, but you know, elsewhere in United States, everywhere, usually we sit in the classroom, watch, watch the student teacher, you know, deliver the lesson, right? That's before the COVID time. But because we couldn't do it, so what we did was we record, we recorded, you know, the whole session and the course coordinator will watch the recording and, and took notes. And then, and then they, they met with the, you know, the tutor and then started to do the debriefing. So what, what are the strengths of, the day, of that day? And what's your, you know, lacking or what, what other areas you still need to improve. So if you give me a little bit of um, example. So this is the first, first session. When Jessica, so Jessica uh, is a Chinese tutor. Uh, she never taught anything online. So she, she was like nervous. Her uh, course major coordinator, um, probably two weeks after COVID, when she finished her first uh, collaboration. So let's, let's listen to it just a little. Probably starting from here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I hope you don't mind, but um, yeah, I was suggested by Julian that um, you need coordinators, uh, uh, um, tutors recording so we can um, exchange ideas on how to improve um, and the tutorial sessions. So I watched yours and there's only one session, so it's not too much for me. <laughs> It's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, that happens that you know the second week is Good Friday. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I think you know it's it's very courageous. This, uh, I understand how it must be uh, such a big hurdle to to live, and for me as well, you know, same thing. Hatch. all these technologies overnight <laughs> so that's that's really good that you um conducted the first session and uh successfully you know like yeah it did so that was the first debriefing session between jessica and her major coordinator so you can you can hear you can see that uh, the coordinator was very supportive encouraging right very warm she knew Jessica was very new to online teaching, so she tried to make her feel comfortable. Uh, so then, the you know, the um, you know, um, discussion Jessica teaching. Now, this is the last session when they almost finished the semester. Okay, the first semester in twenty twenty. And this is the last session uh, and the course coordinator another meeting based on just action of the whole experience so let's listen to it uh, just a little bit
personally, I think uh, it saved me a lot of time on traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but this is personal. Um, in regard of students' reality, that there are still some students who show their uh, strong motivation in learning, and um, after every tutorial, student some students will some questions on the workbook or talk about their life, which is really good. But um, yeah, this is something that I feel I feel happy about. And yeah, and um, your advice and advice from uh, Julian, the uh, teaching uh, teaching activities, and I, I follow your advice and do it. I think uh, which is quite effective because sometimes i need someone who can give me the opposite opinion to stop me to do something well i didn't pay her to say that okay <laughs> well as you can see that um you know jessica was get, getting more confidence and then she's the one uh, she's a quite in, she's a, a interesting case um in the beginning and also you know during the you know the first semester she was not happy that some students never showed up and remember earlier i talked about student go you remember that i talked about student ghosting right so you guys know why why you meant student ghosting so um it's a very interesting phenomenon i think encountered yes okay so probably you also encountered <laughs> ghost yeah. yes they ghost you <laughs> yeah let this spirit from class but how do you know because if you have so many students right in a in a collaborate session for example in a collaborate session or in a in a zoom meeting so how did you know they suddenly just you know disappeared or just just left how did you know well because you know remember jessica still was kind of mindset right because she was trained by as a, a space space tutor of course right when she started the online teaching so she still actually brought the face-to-face -face teaching kind of a many classroom management kind of mentality to online teaching Right. Um, yeah, because they are only teachers speaking and no interaction. So what she found there was uh, not just her, some other tutors in that when they asked the students to break out, you know, in a breakout room session, so they have a group session, right? So that's the only way you can actually create In the online space, in online space by using the breakout room. So the, the tutor uh, divided students into separate groups using breakout room session. And then suddenly some students actually tested her, saying that um my my partner is oh he or oh, she never replied to me. Is that Oh, although this student's name participant list. So basically that tells you that they just log in and then they left. And they never show their, their face or voice. Another um, you know, frustration that Jessica had was so she tried to create this kind of you know, presence. So she liked to see students' face and hear students' voice, but some students just didn't show their face or didn't turn on the camera, didn't want to talk through the audio. That might, that might give you some kind of indication that either if you want to give them some benefit of the doubt, they might have some, you know, like sitting at home, they like sharing a computer with a whole family. So they didn't, they didn't want to turn on the camera to let the teacher 
or classmates see everything in the house, right? That's one of the reasons. The other one is that they just feel sh they didn't want to turn on the camera. So every all the eyes will be on there, right? So that's why I was, I was saying in the beginning, when you deliver any uh, uh, course, you have to think about a social emotional kind of learning aspect. It's not just technology. It's not just learning. It's not just teaching. But we also had to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, social emotional issues. So just bring that a lot. Now. Yeah, I, I can oh. see you record now. All okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, we, we are almost going to the uh, near the part three. So before that, I'm going to show you after this redevelopment, right? Remember we redeveloped the whole unit, the whole major? Looks like right now after the COVID, right? So we, we use the COVID, the, the COVID time, the whole semester to redevelop the Chinese major, uh, Japanese major units to make it more engaging, interactive, multimodal, not just text, as not just linear kind of way of learning. So I originally prepared two Blackboard sites for you to look at, but because of the time, so I'm gonna show you just one, the Japanese one, how about that? So let me show you what it looks like right now. So this is uh, the Japanese unit, the ridiculous unit, this one here, first module. Now you got a V, here the video here and you also have this writing vocabulary practice right so you can do key so not only they show the vocabulary words they also you know voice out so it's to help you actually practice speaking pronunciation as well and then you also have the match so, for example, you know, you can you had to match the, the word with the, the correct, you know, uh, Japanese letter. Of course, they're all wrong. I'm, I don't know Japanese very well. And so this is another writing activity, and it's on the matching. Kaito desu. So, you know, remember, it's the first unit, it's entry level, it's very beginning. So, they have to provide a lot of input and also not just text, but also they use a lot of, uh, you know, features and images or even a sound a video. And the last thing I want to show you is this one here. So this is the, like um, at the end of this unit, this lesson, they will have a uh, speaking and practice, right? So we know at the end of the day, you are not just learning a language without using that, right? So you have to practice speaking. So like, we have students to actually upload, you know, their speaking, recording. So for example, this one here, add a video of your own self-introduction. You can use the format from the example above. So students, students try to practice the speaking. So let's listen to it. Pretty good, right? So this student also saying, so give them more credits and you can also, you know, rate, you can like your classmates speaking, self-introduction as well. So give them more interaction, give them more uh, practice, even if it's online, even if it's a fully online mode, they can still have the chance to practice on their own at their own pace. Uh, was we were using for this module. Um, remember, we have a tech support, we have IT support. So IT was uh, using the, pro the, um, the program, the software program called HP5. HP5 um, is a software program that you had to purchase from a school. So they use that to develop different kinds of, uh, you, know, um, you know, activities, interactive activities. So we're using Palette. This one we use palette. I'm going to introduce palette in a minute. Uh, so we try to incorporate 
a lot of uh, not a lot of but you know appropriate carefully selected um, technology tools that you create to maximize students learning online. It's called HT5. So um, yeah, so I think that to give you a kind of example, like letting you know that beginning the linear only test based to here now multimodal and engaging, right? So yeah, so the sky's the limit. Now back to the slides. Um, the end of a course survey and see how students, you know, their the new development, right? What what is uh, this kind of new unit of experience? The results were generally positive. If you look at the you know the the quotes here, so I really enjoyed the online experience. I think all the maybe you realize that online learning is the most. If quarantine wasn't implemented, I don't think I would ever experience online learning. I'm glad I was able to. This is a surprise, right? You would have a thought students who actually would hate online learning because they want to have a face-to-face -face kind of uh, you know experience. But some students they feel like you know online opportunity to to focus on study and focus on you know because sometimes you only have two hours. After that, a couple of it. But on this, give them a lot of time to, to practice on their own at their own pace. So they can do it again, again, again until they feel more comfortable, right? And I think despite the circumstances, the resources and tools that were provided to me ensure that I still learn the content the best to my best of my ability. That is the, the purpose of doing this development. I think my teacher handled the transition very, very well. So I found that I'm still learning at a good rate. Technology redevelopment could play, play a role. However, teachers, teachers still the center of the attention. We are the ones who can make the difference. You can have a lot of good materials, high advanced you know the technology cutting edge technology if the teacher doesn't embrace it or doesn't know how to deliver it it's not going to work right so this is dissemination so we, we um because i managed to edit the book out of this project and also i presented and we also presented in different kind of uh, um, on different kind of occasions at the school or you know internationally and also we now try to uh, develop the full online japanese and chinese major courses australia or ua so that's what um, this COVID, you know made us do so lastly this is the only research um I want to share with you. So remember in the beginning, I was sharing with you my, my um, a little bit about me. So early this year, unfortunately, I, I published this book, I edited this book. It's my first edited book. It's called Emergency Remote Teaching and Beyond. So I successfully curated 24 chapters from the contributors, authors, language educators, researchers from all over the world. So we have people from Vietnam, the several chapters based in Vietnam, and Indonesia, um, and also from you know, Philippines, Latin America, and the Middle East, and also Canada, and also Europe. So all over the place, everyone tried to contribute you know, their um, understanding of the, the situation and how they actually turn things around using different kind of tools, pedagogical kind of uh, you know, strategies and different kind of uh, learning designs and they share their, um, their two cents with all of us. 
So I define this book into two parts, right? So we have a teacher voice, we have a research corner. So if you are interested in teaching only, and uh, you can look at the um, one. So problem is, it's all about teacher's voice, right? So all the teachers, educators, they try to share, uh, for example, what kind of digital um, technological tools they, they were using and what kind of professional development they were doing. And you will have a thought, Japan, Japan was a defense country, they should be able to tackle the crisis online teaching very, very well. Well, surprise, surprise, the chapter one, oh, sorry, chapter two, the author who is currently teaching in Japan, and he, he was saying that the government, the government and the schools, they were not prepared. And also, you know, Japanese teaching, you know, was quite, quite, quite like road. And so that, that's a shocking kind of like, you know, uh, you know, ref revelation to me, because I thought, oh, okay, they will, they will have a lot of technology to, to deal with it. But no. So all the schools, they were not prepared. And also we talk about teacher identity and agency, right? So if you want to do the online credit, right? So online observation, if you used to have an international like study exchange, study exchange program, right? Between Vietnam and the USA or between two countries, you have a, you know, in, intercultural project you want to use to do. And you, you took students to, you know, um, that country for a couple, a couple of time, like a period of time, but you can, you couldn't do it anymore. So how did you continue the virtual study program, right? So what kind of a learning tools you actually incorporate into your uh, lessons? It's all about part one. And for part two, for researcher, if you are interested in doing research, so we and some teacher also, uh, research also use uh, auto biography to document, to, to tell the story narratively about how occasion using how they become more resilient and how they deal with their uh, social emotion and kind of uh, you know teaching and also their well-being and then a couple of the chapters were looking at social media research how do they use twitter how do they use use uh, facebook to conduct research so is it fair Uh, kind of book and the, there's a lot of food for thought if I could take away so I would encourage you to um, to take a look if you have a chance and for curtain students if you're a curtain student uh, you can access the book uh, current account you can access the book as well okay so now I think uh, I'm coming to the closure um, I still have a two activity I want to share with you and uh, it, it comes down to the practical side. We're going to talk more about the, the tools. The, uh, Chen, am I still on, on, on the right track? How much time do I still have? Um, you still have um, about 15 to 20 minutes. Julia? Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I, I will speed up a little bit. I would like you guys to probably, um, I want you guys to okay. So this is a link. If you click on this link, sorry, I think I, I had to click on AB1, to AB1 here. Try it again. If you really link, and you should do the Google Doc I created. It should take you to this page. Yeah, I, I think I saw somebody already here. Okay, so take you to the breakout room. So probably uh, you guys can in a group, okay, in a group, spend probably four minutes and try to share or you know or just you know input any any or any source, any online source that you know about. You know about. Um, 
what kind of age group do you think would be appropriate for this this uh this source this app uh, what kind of profession level is all the beginner intermediate or defense and what kind of feature and what kind of talk you know target you know skill this or it's about speaking for vocabulary or for grammar or for reading okay so now if we can compile this page everyone could get something new right everyone okay so shall we Or do you think we should just um, stick to okay maybe we'll just do it here now okay we don't need to go to uh, the breakout room because i don't think we have enough time okay good if you list uh, the source please also put in the uh, age group professional professional level the feature it doesn't have to be long you just have to give everyone a summary okay. and you will see if your suggested uh, source will be the same as mine and that I'm going to share with you as well. And you, your, um, your resource. And if you explore this tool, will be worth exploring for your own teaching later on. I'm surprised everyone knows so much about you know these apps, which is great, which is great. And then I could see some um, familiar ones I, I, I'm personally also using, and some new ones I um, I I'm not familiar with, but I'm also interested in. This is a Google Docs. I think you guys know it pretty much already. Okay, yeah. Four minutes. Appreciate more because this is the time that we can all contribute to the virtual community of professional practice. Anyone could benefit from this sheet. Oh, something not H5P. Hmm. That's pretty good. This person must be tech savvy, hey? Probably it's a, um, that's good. Flash car quizzes. Work wall, Mentimeter. I never heard of Mentimeter, but it's very interesting. Also like a work wall. Class kick, hmm, interesting. Class point. Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, yes. Okay, one last minute. And guys, I really, really appreciate you guys' generosity, um, collegiality, it's because I think it's quite uh, helpful not only for me but for everyone here who uh, uh, is attending the same webinar today. While you are uh, still typing, I'm going to charge my battery because my battery is running low now. Uh, let me just. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Okay, still continue filling out this sheet. I, I think that we will, um, I will gonna keep this one as well for myself because I think that will, they will be very interesting to know some of the uh, the apps or some of the resources here that I've never heard of or that I never tried before. Um, but I think that is a very useful kind of sheet. This will be called the practice. This is a like, 
synchronous kind of collaboration, right? Synchronous collaboration, real time collaboration you can do with your students in the group as well. So, and now it's my turn. I'm going to share with you some of my um, two cents. Um, so, called tech bootcamp, right? So, we have a low tech, mid tech, and high tech. Let's face it, not everyone has the facility or knows a lot about, you know, technology online sources, right? So, you always go back to this, you know, the old school way of teaching or material you have. But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you can make it interactive and fun, okay? Okay, low tech. So everyone could use, everyone could answer the PowerPoint. Everyone knows how to use PowerPoint, right? Remember, like every step, every lesson, when you finish every lesson, the next lesson, you want to recap. You want to know how much students actually have acquired or learned those key points you introduced in the last lesson. But instead of doing the quiz, like, you know, exercises or test, you can make it like a game. You can make it like a game. We call it Jeopardy. Jeopardy game. I don't know if you've heard of Jeopardy. If you watch the show, American show, called Jeopardy, right? So let me give you an example. This is Jeopardy. <laughs> this is a PowerPoint, by the way. This is a PowerPoint. Everyone can do it. So you have. So this is my, uh, I use that for my TESO and applied linguistics uh, unit, which is called language teaching methodologies, right? I think some of my students, former students actually who took note about this. So the one, one of history, the history of the language teaching methods, right? You have grammar translation, you have an audio lingual, you have uh, communicative language teaching, you have different kind of teaching. Oh, if my students actually get it, if they could remember different kind of teaching methods, right, that I introduced in the last topic. So, guys, sit down, give you a piece of paper. Now, let's do a quiz. I want to put it in like a game. So, you can define students into different groups, right, different groups. So, each group can actually play. So you will be the host, I'll be the host, your teacher will be the host, and you have a 100 to $500. So the, the, the higher the money, the more difficult the question will be. So let's see. So in this method, so like each team has to raise the hand to, to actually answer the question. So whoever raised the hand first will answer the question, right? So maybe the team one will say, do you guys know the answer? Getting meaning across through communication is crucial in this method. So this is called communicative language teaching, right? So if this person, if this team got it right, they got $300. So you actually, the money, how much they got each team. Go back and you try another one. So another team would say $200. Facilitator or manager to go. So we is still communicate like you teach, right? So if this is well, so by the end you could you could choose so you, you would know which team actually actually got a got the most money, right? And then you can actually give them some gift like a chocolate or you know something else if you want so whenever i play this in classroom even online i can do it online as well i play in the classroom they don't want to stop they don't want to compete with each other but it's not it's not it's not like you know you're doing a quiz you turn it into like a game so they all love that right who doesn't love game who doesn't like to play so you can do this um i use this one i call japanese the uh, template, the Jeopardy template. And then you can download the, you know, the, the Jeopardy template and you can actually make it your own. You can change, you can change 
to your own content. And they also have a Jabity online as well. So this is for the low tech using PowerPoint. Okay. So we also we also did Google that like one we just did, right? The collaboration, like a like real-time collaboration using uh, the Google Doc too. And palette. I think some of you mentioned palette as well. Um, I think somebody mentioned. So palette is also a good way of uh, for uh, like collaboration, like um, collaboration. So remember the the two the first two activity I, I did with you. This one here. Palette. palette okay. So um, you can use palette to design the design of. So um, the, this is your this is your contribution, okay? This is your contribution, and then you could do put the upload in the images, web link, pictures, or even you know video. So you can it's like a multimodal, multimodal kind of a, a platform for students to contribute to collaborate. And remember earlier we look at the Japanese Japanese uh, Blackboard unit, and the student actually record record their speaking, self introduction in Japanese, right? What is your what is your uh, Julian this? Remember that that uh, speaking activity was developed using Palette as well. Okay, that's another online source you can actually. Try out if you want. So this is the second one, Meet Tech. And uh, what's my last one there? Uh, Kahoo. I think somebody mentioned Kahoo as well. Kahoo is a very fun. It's a very uh, I like Kahoo. It's a um, it's, it's Kahoo is similar to Quizlet. Quizlet. Quizlet or quizzes. It's also like a game dig digital game based learning and teaching. So you don't want to give a student quiz, but you want them to play again. So they are learning, they are trying to remember, remember the word, the grammar point, or vocabulary without actually feeling, they are feeling like they're playing again. Okay, they're playing again. So somebody, so yeah, so let's, let's try it out for fun. So if you go to Kahoo, and, you can you can you can sign up for free for free for teachers okay for teachers but I think you can only have like you know certain limit like you can have a like, full kind of a capacity but to get you started so let's try I'll try this one here uh okay this one here oh sorry let me see here. Mm -hmm. Junior. Okay, here. Let's try this one here. Okay, so you can sign in. When you sign up, you will have an account, right? But I haven't signed up yet, so let's just play as a guest. Now, you will see um, you will see a QR code later. You can do the team. You can still do the team. Okay, team competition, but us. So you um, students will have a pin. Okay, they will have a pin number. So you can you can go to this website www.kahoo.it if you don't have a QR code scanner please scan please scan or please or please go to the website and put in the, the pin and then you will have your uh, you have to create your name so we can play I'm waiting <laughs> Okay, good. Got TT here. Okay, got Halu too. 
Do we have more before I start? Chinka. Okay. So, okay. I'm gonna start. Okay. Are you ready? Just, just give it a test drive. Like, okay, see how it goes. So you can turn, um, every less every for every uh, memory test or everything in this learning. Okay. It could be for adults, for children, for younger children, for adults, for you know ESL, EFL kind of classroom, uh, depending on your lesson. Okay, let's start it. Okay, phrasal verbs. Okay, you should be having no problem with the phrasal verbs. Okay, quick. Okay, on our way home from the beach. What? Oh, gonna, okay. Okay, ten people got it right. So it's, we stop in to see grandma. Okay, wow, see, that's pretty good. So we got it right. Okay, because you tell, answer the question right, and then he or she answer the question first. Got a higher score. Okay. Try one more. They show me. Okay. 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 Pretty good. Most people got it right. They show me around like beautiful home. So who got it first? Okay, brush, okay, brew, a defense, just next to that, okay? So this person, right, he got it first, so he's catching up. So next, one more, one more. I think when I was in the yard, I found claws snooping. This is a bit tricky. Okay, interesting. Snoopy around the kitchen, right? Snoopy. Oh, surprise. <laughs> okay. Surprise answer trick of three. Congratulations. I don't know who surprised it. You are on the top of the scoreboard. Oh. So yeah, you can turn it around and design your own quiz and put it in like a game. Okay. A time so i won't have a time to do to demonstrate but i will show you i show you another good one that i feel are really really uh useful it's called this high-tech thing it's called get the town have you heard of get a town no so so get a town is a good way of um you know good of collaboration and also video conferencing in real time and using avatars. So each one of you your own avatar. You will build your own space, like a classroom, the office. You can actually discuss in their own space and they can turn on a camera and they won't hear anything outside the space. So they have their own privacy and they can discuss. And then they can also do the, the whiteboard they do the whiteboard collaboration, brainstorming, brainstorming. So they are, they are, this is this is the avatars, the video. So it's multi stable, better than Zoom. And it's not, they feel like they're actually together because they can just remotely, like, you know, over the place. They're in the same room, in the same place, at the same time, using the avatar to communicate. Right, and it's fun, and then I guess why your kids will love because it, it, it's so cute way of you know communicating and also working collaborating. Okay, I think I'm I'm pretty much running out of my time, so I'm just stop here. Uh, so what I'm sharing today is to give you um, a summary here. So again, in every crisis lies opportunity. So I think that what uh, the pandemic told us, the biggest lesson the pandemic told us is that 
teachers are resilient. We need to, we can actually bounce learn and see how much it can actually upscale your, your teachers tool. Bring this back to yourself. Even after crisis, after you know pandemic, you can still utilize those tools. So we are not still and let a crisis taking over us. You know, we are, we are fighting back. And then that's how you grow. So always remember it's a key. So teachers always have to learn, upscale. We don't just use the same material, you know, from the beginning till the end. You challenge, stimulate your teaching approaches. That is the, my final two things that I want to share. And thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Um, I think we will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Okay, um, dear participants, if you have any um, questions, please turn on your microphone and speak to ask your question, or you can type in the chat box as well. I think my presentation is quite clear, so they all, they, they all fine without any questions. <laughs> Or any comments will be fine too, you know, any comments or any, um, you know, similar thought you want to share um, or you want to know more about, oh, we got one hand yes. raised up. Uh, please, Mr. Uh, Julian, I'm a bit uh, curious, like when they teach Japanese and, and Chinese, uh, they are only written language, languages, so how could they be like, interactive on the screen? They use a pen or something? Oh no! I mean, Japanese and Chinese. Study is quite like with the speaking. Um, oh, is there yeah. Any, any snapshots for uh, illustrate how people interact with the with the uh, written languages like Chinese or Japanese? Yeah. So the one I show you, I demonstrated earlier, like example, was Japanese. Was Japanese. So it's it's not Chinese. So they're two different kind of units. So. Um, so for Japanese, when they practice kanji, right? When they practice kanji, the writing. So they still need to use the you know, interactive whiteboard to practice kanji. So online, so what they're doing is like to upload to, to the, uh, the palette or to Blackboard as an assignment. So they can still do it. They don't necessarily have to, you know, do something else. But also uh, there are some, um, Japanese like ping, like not ping, Japanese like kanji or, you know, switch to the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So they can actually type using the English to, to type the, the Japanese characters or Japanese words. So they can yeah. use that too. So there's some online kind of source that a tutor or, or um, lecturers will actually share with the students to um, help them input the Ch uh, Japanese characters or Chinese characters. Through the keyboard, yeah, so they can do is, is understandable. Yeah, coming is yeah. understandable, but like to some extent, uh, those type of languages. Uh, like in in Vietnam, I have seen people just like live stream. They use the board and then just put a camera, uh, shooting them with writing on the board, like with their hand. Um, it's, it's it's interactive too, but um, to some extent, it's really hard if you cannot turn on the video or illustrate or demonstrate to uh, yeah that you you can write okay with your hand especially for those uh, languages absolutely because at the end of the day mm -hmm. at the end of the day for beginners what they really need is practice 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 right they keep practicing so that that's the key um i think there's another um student actually uh participant mentioning interesting in the session of a student ghosting so what are some feasible solutions to prevent students from disappearing from the class time or the group work activity? That is a very, very good question. You know, let's face it, you can force them to turn on a camera or voice, you know, audio, because at the current time during the pandemic, we made a lot of accom accommodations. We tried to in students, um, you know, shoes because we, we, we knew at that time not every student could access the internet. 
100%. We, we, we could actually penalize them for not showing their face or speaking. So we, that's some kind of like, you know, compromise that we have to make as a teacher. And so, but what we can do though, is to make students understand that having a real time interaction with your tutor, with your classmates in real time, you know, through collaborate is the best way for you to practice your Japanese or Chinese. However, because we, we redeveloped the whole unit, right? We're in the, the materials activities so that students still can actually practice on their own, even though they didn't actually turn on the camera, they didn't actually, you know, turn on their microphone to speak. Um, in, it's very interesting, a curtain in Australia, participation, so we cannot penalize their participation just because they are not in classroom. I know it sounds very strange, but um, in United States, where I'm from, in you know, Canada, when I did my study, so usually, the professor or lecturer will have a 10% or 50% of the score there. But in Australia, especially at Curtin, we cannot penalize students' participation just because they didn't show up in classroom. You know, if a stone slave complete the assignments and their tests or whatever assignment you, you, you give them, if they complete on time, before the due date, they can still pass. I know, so that's what I'm saying. Ghosting, I think ghosting is an issue. You can only encourage them, but you, and also because, you know, every student is different. Everything coming from different kind of social economic background. So yeah, it's a double-edged sword, I know, but. Is if a teacher make a rule at the beginning of the, the term asking them to turn on their camera? Yes, actually, Jessica and the other Asian language tutors and the lecturers they did that all the time. But guess shy or they just didn't want to turn on their camera. They just want to listen. They just want, they still show their participation by being present in collaborate session, right? They they are not ghosting. They just want to. They still they are still present but they didn't want to turn off the camera when everyone's in the same room, collaborate room. So I think it's something to do with the students, you know, um, you know, personality and also they just feel like if I have my camera, everyone's looking at me and when I speak and if I make any mistake and I will feel so embarrassed, I'm losing my face. So there's kind of like emotional kind of uh, aspect that will take into consideration. But definitely you can, you, can, you can encourage them, you can encourage them to turn on and give them some kind of like, you know, understanding purpose by doing that. You're not doing that, you wanted to turn on the key. You're doing, you ask them to do this because you think, you let them know that beneficial for their learning. However, it's up to them. You're very welcome. Julian, can I have my, my own question? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, I'm just curious if um, in Australia, uh, what you think about um, the use or the access of using the videos where uh, captures during the online uh, classes because uh, the students uh, keep sharing the clips or the videos captured during their lesson online and um, so what's the case in Australia? You mean that um, for example if we like what we're doing now we we'll record a whole Zoom session and yeah some and then what about the sharing um, videos on the social networks okay that is not allowed okay. it's only within the class within the class because um whatever you're doing in the classroom for the teaching and learning purposes is fine but it's only within the curtain kind of network. 
like the black book, right? However, if you go beyond the curtain, like black book, or you know, you know, um, you know, for example, you need to input your student ID, teacher's ID, uh, step ID, and the uh, password in order to access Blackboard. However, whatever you put outside like YouTube channel or all that other resources, that will have some kind of uh, repercussions. Like, you know, oh, what about the students didn't feel like comfortable sharing their, their, own, their own materials or their face or whatever their presence outside curtain. Um, the school doesn't allow us to do it. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone, do you have um, any other questions? It looks like we cover on uh, the questions. Julian, do you have anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? No, I, I feel like, you know, this year, today's, um, you know, uh, cohort is very, uh, very, 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 actually, tech savvy. <laughs> they <laughs> share with me some of the, like apps or resources that I never heard of as well, you know, so I think that that's how we learn from each other. And then, you know, but I, I think some for teachers, I think you have to understand your student mm. interests as well. Okay, and don't think that, oh, this is good for my students, but you need to do some needs analysis first to make sure that whatever you're doing, design, developing for students actually um, uh, align with their learning interests and the learning styles. So, and technology is, is not, it's not like um, panacea for, for everything. So you used to have to be critical and had to select the, the, the ones that are actually most appropriate for your students and for your teaching. But I think that uh, today's session, I hope, I hope will give you some, um, some insights and some principles that you can actually draw upon, you know, when you, when you try to develop some new Okay, thank you, Julian. Uh, thank you very much for your informative and interactive uh, section today. I hope that um, in the future, in the near future, we can see you back in person in Ho Chi Minh City at Simo Retreat. Yeah, I hope so too. I can't wait to go back. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Can't wait to go back to Ho Chi Minh City to see you all. Yeah. Great, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time in the future events. For those participants who are interested in applying for this program, uh, the, the master program in applied linguistics this year, 2022, uh, please stay with us for uh, the information section. Uh, and I highly appreciate it if some alumni can stay to share your experience in studying the master program with the future students as well. So thank you very much. And we have um, we have the the webinar evaluation posted in uh, the chat box. So we highly appreciate if you can uh, complete the survey for us. Thank you very much. See ya guys. Have a great okay, day. Thank Bye. you, Julian. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Master of Arts in Applied Linguistic program has been jointly conducted by Curtin University Australia and Simio Retract Vietnam in accordance with the permission by the Vietnam's Ministry of Education and Training since 2006. The program is designed for professionals in the field of language teaching aiming to provide students with in-depth knowledge of the advanced English language and teaching methods. Students who successfully complete the program will be awarded the Curtin University Master of Arts in Applied Linguistics. The program's participants are English language teachers from many provinces of Vietnam and different countries such as Canada, Ireland, the USA, 
Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, etc. Simu Retrack, in collaboration with Curtin University, often organizes annual events for the program alumni to gather, network, and participate in a number of seminars and conferences. Each course lasts for 18 months with four study periods. Students will participate in one-week workshop and self-study with online tutorial support provided in each study period. Students will study and interact with professors or lecturers who are experts with rich experience in the field of linguistics and English language teaching from Curtin University and Senior Retrack. The program is delivered in English. Students have to complete 200 credits in total with 7 units. To participate in this program, applicants need to meet the following entry requirements. A bachelor degree in English Literature or Education. IELTS Academic Overall Score of 6.5 with a minimum of 6 on all bands. And evidence to support your teaching experience. We are looking forward to welcoming you to the Master Program of Applied Linguistics.